Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Agent Ashenbrenner's YouTube video podcast. Today we're talking about licensed games. Now what I mean by licensed games are games that are based off of like a comic book, a movie, a TV show, stuff like that. So, for example, a game that I just started is called uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It's based off of the Star Wars franchise and so far I'm having a lot of fun with this game. I'm not very far, I've only played like a tiny bit of it, but I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna get that dual bladed lightsaber and that's gonna be cool. But anyway, so yeah, I got my laptop here, it's got my talking points. So let's dive into this discussion. Licensed games are awesome. They can take what you like about a TV show or a movie or a comic book and put it into video game form, and that's cool. I was thinking about this when I saw the trailer for the new Fast and Furious video game, which looks like a lot of fun. Let's talk about superheroes. There's lots of games either based on the comics in general or on a specific superhero movie, and I really like those. They can take the cool characters and stories from the comic, and it's really cool to see them in video games. Also, I think it's really cool when actors reprise their roles from, you know, whatever the other uh, source material is. For example, in the video game uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine, Hugh Jackman reprises his role as Wolverine. Another example is how that new Fast and the Furious game features Michelle Rodriguez, Vin Diesel, and Tyrese Gibson reprising their roles from the Fast and Furious movies. So that's cool. It's also cool when actors let the games use their likeness even if they're not doing the voice. For example, in the video game Mortal Kombat 11, the Terminator is a character in that game. I think he's a DLC fighter, but he's a character in there. He's not voiced by Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he resembles Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, because Schwarzenegger plays the T-800 Terminators in the Terminator movies. The voice actor who does the voice in Mortal Kombat 11 is actually Chris Cox. A few licensed games that I've played are Spider-Man 2, uh, Robert Ludlum's The Bourne Conspiracy, Let's see, I mentioned Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I right hear, hold on. Check my notes. Oh yeah, of course, Star Wars The Force Unleashed, Batman Arkham Asylum. Sorry, notes again. Oh yeah, Lego Batman 2, DC Superheroes. There are more, but for now let's talk about some interesting aspects of these games. In general, video games are supposed to have more content and longer length than, say, a movie. So when a game is based on a movie, they usually have to add more content that wasn't in the original movie, you know, such as like some uh, side stories or, you know, a more expanded telling of the same story. They also sometimes have to increase the number of villains or henchmen, you know, to allow for a fun gameplay loop. Because like in a movie, you have like, you know, your group of henchmen that the guy, that the hero will take down. But in like a video game, you need like, you need like a lot of villains, you know, for the player to fight against, you know. And yeah, I'm going to be cheating here, looking at my notes a bit, but it's because I typed out this paragraph about uh, some interesting stuff about movie adaptations, so, and I just want to get it right, so I'm going to read my notes here. So sometimes games are direct adaptations of the source material. Sometimes they are sequels to the source material. For example, Spider-Man 2 follows the plot of the movie Spider-Man 2, but of course it adds in new subplots and villains. But the game The Amazing Spider-Man takes place after the events of the film The Amazing Spider-Man. Sometimes they have less connection to the source material, simply having a character or characters from the source material in a new story. Sometimes they're set between films. An example is Star Wars The Force Unleashed, which takes place between Revenge of the Sith and Rogue One, a Star Wars story. In terms of Star Wars The Force Unleashed, it features a new character and a new story that ties in with the source material. Of course, there are returning characters like uh, Darth Vader and Darth Sidious, but uh, the character, uh, his code name is Starkiller. I forgot what his actual name is, but they call him Starkiller. Uh, he's a new character for the series, and he's pretty cool. And he's a really powerful, Force-sensitive guy. I tell you, this guy can really do some damage with the Force. <laughs> Man, that was a fun game. Now, I really like games that started out as games, you know, like Halo or Call of Duty, but there's just something about licensed games that are really enjoyable for me. All right, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in. I just wanted to talk about licensed video games and why I enjoy them. Thank you for tuning in to Agent Ashenbrenner's video podcast. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.